Should you use coffee grounds in the garden? Some say it's a great fertilizer, grows great plants. Others use it for pest control. And yet there's a whole group of people who say don't use it in the garden, it stunts plant growth. In this video, we're going to look at the truth of coffee grounds in the garden and tell you exactly how to use them. I'm going to cover a number of claims and I'm going to do them in this order. Are coffee grounds acidic and will they change the pH of your soil? Do they get rid of slugs? What about ants and other insects? Will they harm your earthworms? Are coffee grounds a good fertilizer? And can they be used for weed control? Or do they stunt the growth of plants? Can't be both, can it? And finally, I'll have a look to see whether coffee grounds are a green or a brown if you're going to use them in your compost. And then I'll give you my view as to how you should use coffee grounds in the garden. If you use them correctly, they're great. But if you use them incorrectly, you could be harming your plant. Before I get into today's topic, I'd like to introduce you to one of my friends here. This is my Korean lilac. These are beautiful plants, and in some ways they're better for many home gardens than the regular lilac. Now they bloom a couple weeks after the French lilac, but they can be kept as much smaller shrubs, so they fit into our small gardens better. The individual flowers are not as large as on the French lilac, and the fragrance isn't quite as strong, but there are many more flowers, so the flowers show that you get is pretty good. When you're pruning lilacs, remember you want to prune them right after they flower. What is the pH of coffee grounds? Well, it varies quite a bit because there are different types of coffee, and I've seen numbers anywhere from below 5 to above 7, but most of them seem to be in the range of about 6.8. Starbucks tested their coffee grounds because they give them out to people, and they came up with a value of 6.7. So that's slightly acidic. When you put those in your soil, it's not going to affect the pH at all. They're basically neutral. So using these to modify your pH, that's a myth. Can you use coffee grounds to control slugs? The idea is that coffee grounds still contain some caffeine and that's toxic to slugs, so they won't crawl over coffee grounds. I looked for some scientific evidence and really didn't find any, so I ran my own experiment. I got a bunch of slugs and a container and I put a ring of coffee grounds around them. Put the slugs in the middle. Then I waited to see what happened. Well, the slugs had no problems with the coffee grounds. They just ran right over them to try and get out of the container. And I did it several times. If you want to see the details of that, have a look at this blog post. Coffee grounds do not stop slugs. What about ants? Lots of people claim that coffee grounds will get rid of the ants in your garden. First of all, ants are good for the garden, so you rarely have to get rid of them. But I do understand fire ants is a different story, and you might want to get rid of those. Again, I couldn't find a lot of scientific data on this, so I ran my own experiment. I went out, found some ants in my patio stones, and put a ring of coffee grounds around their entrance. Surely they would leave the area. Well, in the morning I came out, the ants had actually moved the coffee grounds out of the way, because I guess they didn't like crawling over them. They literally moved them out of the way, and they were going back and forth. They had no problem with coffee grounds. What about other insects? So some people say, well, if we take the coffee grounds and we make a liquid of them, an extraction, that has caffeine in it, very similar to the coffee you drink, and we can spray insects with that. Well, that might work. The caffeine level is fairly low, and you're going to have to spray right on the insect. Spraying a leaf and waiting for the insect to come along and walk on it isn't going to make much difference. But spraying the caffeine extraction from coffee grounds may work. Spreading coffee grounds around your plants to get rid of it, that's not going to work. There have been several reports of coffee grounds harming earthworms. And of course, we know that earthworms are good for our garden, so we really don't want to harm them. Well, it turns out that People who do vermicompost, they keep worms in bins and compost their kitchen scraps. They routinely put coffee grounds in there, and it doesn't harm their earthworm. Now, there are some studies that have looked at that, and when earthworms are fed 100% coffee grounds, they do kill the earthworm. But provided earthworms have coffee grounds as part of their diet, there seems to be no harm to them. And of course, in the garden, they're always going to find other things to eat. So putting some coffee grounds in the soil is unlikely to harm your earthworms. Are coffee grounds a good fertilizer? Well, the MPK of coffee grounds is about 1.5.3.3. A lot of people round that off to a 2.3.3. So that's a fair amount of nitrogen compared to the phosphate and potassium. But you have to remember where these coffee grounds came from. 
we just went through a process where we made coffee. So we took the grounds, we put it in boiling water, we extracted all the nutrients, all the molecules that were readily soluble in water. We took those out and we made coffee with them. What's left is the stuff that doesn't easily extract into water. That's organic matter. So it does have nitrogen in it, but it's not free nitrogen. It's not nitrogen that's available to plant. So it will add nutrients to the garden, but you have to wait till these coffee grounds decompose in the soil. And that will happen over years. So slowly they feed the soil, but this is not a quick feed. If you want to feed your house plants today, or you feed your tomato plants today, and you want them to grow tomorrow, coffee grounds is not a good option. Coffee grounds is good for a long-term soil building and a very low level of feeding. It's interesting that there are claims that coffee grounds will suppress weeds and grow better plants. Well, how can this be? Weeds are plants. In nature, there's no difference between weeds. Weeds are only weeds because we consider them weeds. As far as biology goes, they're all plants. So it can't control one and make the other grow. Well, as it turns out, the caffeine in coffee grounds will stunt plant growth. A recent study looked at five different plants, including broccoli, leeks, radish, violas, and sunflowers. And they found that those plants were stunted when the coffee grounds were used as a soil amendment. So if you take the coffee ground and you mix it into your soil, so you use it as an amendment in the soil, we find that plant growth is stunted for about a year. Slowly those coffee grounds break down and the harmful chemicals are degraded by microbes in the soil. And long term, there's no problem. But short term, in six months to a year, there is stunting of plants. They will also stunt weeds. So there is some weed suppression here, but it's short term. Coffee grounds are not good for getting rid of weeds. Coffee grounds stunt plants, and in particular, they harm seedlings. So if you put it in the soil and as an amendment and then try to grow seeds in there, a lot of them will die. So it will harm plants. What about using coffee grounds as a mulch? Will that stunt plant? Possibly. But it's going to have a lot less effect on the plants because those chemicals have to come out of the coffee grounds and seep into the soil down to where the roots are. And then that process, the microbes will act on. So it's safer to use it as a mulch than a soil amendment. Are coffee grounds a brown or a green? But well, when we're talking about composting, the terms brown and green refer to the amount of nitrogen the compound has. And so since the MPK is a 2, 0.3, 0.3, it has a reasonable amount of nitrogen. And a lot of people conclude that it's good for compost. But that really doesn't give you the right picture. That doesn't tell you what you need to know. What's important is the carbon to nitrogen ratio. And you can't get that from the MPK value. As it turns out, coffee grounds has an MPK of about 20. For comparison, grass clippings are a 10. So they have more nitrogen than carbon. So they have a higher level of nitrogen relative to carbon. Kitchen scraps also have a CN ratio of about 10. So coffee grounds do have a little excess nitrogen because our target CN value for composting is about 30. So 20 is a little better. But I wouldn't call these a high nitrogen source. But they are good for compost. All right, so what would I do with coffee ground? First of all, they're an organic material. So getting them into our soil is a good thing. They add carbon to the soil. They build soil long term. They add a little bit of nutrients, which is a good thing. But you have to watch how you use them. The best option is to compost them first and then add them to your garden. If you don't compost, then the second best option is to use it as a mulch. But keep it thin. You don't want any more than about an inch. Because if it gets too thick, it actually stops water from getting to the soil. And the thicker it is, the more likely it is to cut plant. I would keep it out of your vegetable bed completely, especially in areas where you plant seeds. It will harm seeds, even as a mulch. So put it on your ornamental beds as a mulch or compost, but it is worth keeping. If you'd like to learn more about garden myths, have a look at some of my other garden myth videos, and you can get to those right here. Happy garden.